the uh, AMG E63S wagon, and from the moment we picked this car up, I, I had I had kind of an internal fight with myself because my mm. first thought from driving it is, why doesn't every single manufacturer make this car a fast wagon? that dad can enjoy when he drives, but it has a surprising amount of space, hatch space, because I kept looking at it thinking, we're all buying CUVs. Yeah. Find me yeah. a five seat, a, like a standard, what good selling five seat CUV that actually has more space than this. Because this has got that level of space, we should all be buying fast wagons. But that's the thing, they don't, everybody doesn't make one because we don't buy them. Every time we get into a wagon, we think, what a brilliant car. And wagons now have a, a great connotation, whereas mm -hmm. still there's that lingering thing about station wagons that they aren't good to drive. Yeah. As a matter of fact, with a little bit of extra weight over the back there, I think they're supremely balanced. And you have to go to, well, very few manufacturers, Mercedes is still one of them, that makes a genuine wagon. Yep. They've embraced the SUV thing because that's where the money's at. That's where sure, the market sure, is at. Sure. But they still build a wagon and they still make the wagon, all sleeper, wheel drive, sleeper, fast Rejoice. wagon. This is such. It's brilliant. This car handles better than you think, and it's really powerful. Oh my god! Over gosh. 600 horsepower in this, zero to 60 in the mid threes. Uh huh. With the whole brood, bring the brood. We're going fast. I'm <laughs> telling you, this is a fast car. Yeah. And with the all wheel drive, which you can turn off for drift mode, because you can drift the family too. I, yeah. Somebody, you somebody, can please 100 get percent of the power to the rear. Somebody, please get a Starbucks and drift through the pickup line at a school. I want to see that video. Can we get that somehow? Oh, maybe it needs to be us at some maybe, point. Maybe because it could be done in this. Uh huh. All right, so a lot of power. As a matter of fact, this has more power than the AMG GTC. If it you does. can believe that. Yes, yes. Now, it is also heavier. It's almost 1,000 pounds heavier. So what, 47, 4,700, almost 4,750? Yeah. So she's a heavy car. Yep, for but sure. It's a big car, and yep. it's got the all wheel drive, the 4Matic. But it, it doesn't drive, ride, or handle anywhere close to where you think it will. Yeah. Nowhere close. And I think, why don't in consumers buy more of these? Yeah. We have to go to Europe to find, you know, to get our wagon fix, essentially, to find wagons and to find cars like this. Mm -hmm. But this still exists. As a matter of fact, more wagons are actually kind of migrating back. We're hearing more manufacturers starting to bring wagons back. Audi's bringing theirs. Jaguar had their XF Sport break for yeah. a while. They're a niche car, for sure. For sure. Well, but when you discover it, you yeah. think, I, I've stumbled upon something. I've found buried treasure kind of thing. I, you you well, mean people make this and it works and it's great? They keep existing because yeah. they never stopped making them for Europe. Yeah. Go to Europe, see any street in a major metropolitan area where this feels like an aircraft carrier, and it isn't. It is. And that's why wagons work so well in Europe. Plus, they've also got tax differences in some cases as well. Yeah. But... This, yep. They keep making wagons of all flavors in Europe, and then they keep going, huh, should we offer a few to the Americans? Let's, let's bring like one ship full over and just see if we can sell see, those. See if you know, sell. It's just a ship. Yeah. Although you can spec this, and I played with the configurator. I yep. got this up to $122,000. Yep. I could have gone further with more carbon fiber bits and you know, various more. amenities. There's always more. But you know, this is genuinely, if you can afford it, this doesn't say flash by any stretch. This is enthusiasts a hidden enthusiast car. We'll yeah. see it. Yeah. You'll, you'll have brake envy instantly. You'll see the calipers and think, well, I, I want those. And then it drives so well. What I like about this is the tip in for that initial turn in. Yeah, it, it seems does. very sharp. It doesn't seem all wheel drive most of the time. No. It no. is. It is. And here's the thing. When we were on this road yesterday and it was raining and there were leaves everywhere and it was really slick, that all-wheel drive was a gift. It was fantastic. But yet here I am in the drive. We just had the GTC on this same road. And I actually think the power is more eager in this. Forget that it's more for a second. Yeah. It's just the delivery itself is more eager even than it is in the GTC. But 
here I am chucking this big wagon down this road and it is eager to jump into the corners and it's amazing the precision I can get without feeling like that that there's always that lurking understeer in all wheel drive stuff. Yeah. And sure, this doesn't sure. I mean I, I know it will understeer, Plow, but it doesn't push seem corner. to have yeah. it. You have to you, you're gonna have to really overcook it to reveal that. And I feel like it's right into the surface of most things that are all wheel drive. All right, fair enough. Well, this is the four liter V eight and it's got a nine speed transmission. It's it's crispy. There's there's a lot of goodness to it. It's a Mercedes nine speed. Amazing. And she moves. Oh yeah. You can make yourself sick with this car. It can corner so hard. Oh yeah. <laughs> this car, th this is what sleepers are all about. And interestingly, we had this car during our East Coast Atlanta meetup. Yep. So we're just at the tail end of that. And almost more people in the group gravitated toward this car because of its usability. Because Everybody was curious, yeah. So many cars need to do that other thing in your life. And SUVs and CUVs have certainly taken over that. But what other SUV do you know that's relatively affordable with race mode? Race <laughs> mode! Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Cayennes and stuff, I mean, that's the kind of the can, world you've got to you be can, in. But, but you're still, you're now in SUVs. You are, yeah. You're not in the car, the low to the ground, the weight balance, the weight mm -hmm. distribution. You can't do that. You're having no fun over there, having aren't you? no fun. Please, <laughs> take the car away. This See is no that fun initial turn in? Yeah. It feels even harder from the yeah, passenger it, seat. It, uh, it rotates really well, especially considering it's really, really long. And you know, yeah, typically the shorter it is, the better stuff will rotate. This do this seems to fight that off. It really does. You know what's interesting to me is you know I think about term in terms of compromise. Yeah. So many cars will you know oh comfortable ride that means long wheelbase. Oh, this is a long wheelbase. Big time. It's not. It's got as a longer wheelbase than some SUVs, honestly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then it's not as nimble or it's not as powerful. It seems like this car has all the things you want, <laughs> but it still does this. Yep. Yeah. Take it to the track. It has track mode. Yeah, it, honestly, it's been Racing since the Cadillac CTS V wagon that I have been that I that I've lusted after a wagon this much. Yeah, and of yeah, course that sure. was manual, which was awesome. But this has you know more power than that even, and that had a ton. Yeah. And uh, it is a Mercedes build. Granted, granted, it's over a hundred grand, and the Cadillac wasn't. Uh, but it I will come feel down. Like this is crispier than the Cadillac. This is far more planted. Well, the Cadillac wasn't all-wheel drive, and I don't think no. this suffers in handling feel for being all-wheel drive, and that's a success. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I want to be in this car. Yeah. It was such a choice. As Todd said, we had the GTC and this, and this is not a bad place to be. No. I kept coming back to this car thinking, <laughs> it's not second place. No. It has more power. Yeah. But honestly, I wish... I wish this is what families bought. I wish we bought wagons mm -hmm. instead of SUVs. But of course, we're all obsessed with ride height. That's actually the number one reason that the SUVs yeah. sell. There really isn't anything that this can't do that an SUV can with the exception of ride height. And because yeah. most of the, and I'm talking CUVs. Look, if you want, if you want to tow, I get I was it. Say, you want to tow little stuff, bit of towing, fine. But your typical CUV is not a good tow rig. They don't have a whole no. lot of capacity, most of them. So this doesn't have good towing capacity, but it's not its purpose. Granted, if you've ever been to Europe, they tow a huge caravan with something the size of a Fiesta and somehow get away with yeah. it. But short, literally, tow rating and ride height are the only things, because you can't even say all-wheel drive anymore. That's here, and it's a great yeah. all-wheel drive system because yeah. it's actually performance-based, and if you want to get drifty, you can turn it off. I love the, I hate to say it, but I love the southern redneck streak that exists at AMG. It, Have you it ever, is. We, we've talked it about is. this before, and here we are in Georgia, so let's let's embrace that reality. This could have been built, granted, they do have a headquarters here in Atlanta, uh -huh, but this uh -huh. could have been built and designed by people in Georgia that just love rear-wheel drive power and going mudding and getting sideways, and yet it was built by the Germans. I really want to know, do the people at AMG, did they spend some time in the South growing up? Do they maybe, have like four-wheeling in their background? Because it has <laughs> that kind of, you know what we should do? Throw power at that and make it more absurd. And that's what they do to their cars. Well, what AMG and Mercedes have done is build the ultimate parent car. Yes. People have written to us on the podcast and say, guys, what is the ultimate dad car? What is the ultimate mom car? This is the ultimate car for parents. Mm-hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't matter, you're going to want to get sideways, you're going to want to go 
fast and still have a great car for clients. Yeah. You want to take clients you out, and then You're when right. they see their see your car, they to think, "Oh, you got the sensible wagon." You choice. have a nice Mercedes wagon. And That's how very nice. classy. Yes. Until you how classy snick you? down into sport mode <laughs> and say, you know, just put your head back against the headrest. Just I'm just only going to do this once. <laughs> <laughs> Let ready. You ask a lot. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And and then they'll wonder, what is this thing again? Yeah. Where did this come from? Yeah. Too bad that the ultimate parent car is a six figure car. That's too bad because it if is, you're a parent, you probably aren't blowing six figures. Most of us aren't blowing six figures on the family car because we happen to be parents, uh, and that's where the money's I going. I get it. But get it. you know, I'm, but look, having said that though, think about how often. People are rigging up their SUV and they're spinning 75 without blinking. Okay? Yeah. This yeah. is loaded out press car version and it's 120. I'm not saying 75 and 120 are the same. I'm not equating them, but I am saying as parents, the general parent that is middle class these days is spending a lot of money on their car. What are these going to be worth in three or four years? Are they going to be cheap enough? I'd, I'd buy this one regardless. Yeah. I would take this car. When you get into modern Mercedes Benzes, you'll notice the gear selector lever is the piece of gear that they sell to Teslas. <laughs> you just down two detents yeah. and you're away. And you've talked before about the fact that you wish it was nicer. It's not a great feeling piece of equipment. I wish it were a nicer which piece. Which is too bad. Yeah. Something's coming it. right now. You got it. Can Good I job. catch him? Oh God, yes. <laughs> yeah, without trying Wind hard. Wind it out. Without Ooh. trying hard. Yeah, you know what? I'm feeling uh, the combination of a lot of things. Okay. I feel the initial turn-in uh -huh. is quite precise. It's yep. immediate. It's yep. very immediate, far more than you think it should. And I'm feeling more weight in the back, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got Obviously. Yeah. three more yeah, glass yeah. panels in the back, right? Mm -hmm. And the dynamics of the car, the suspension. Mercedes is doing incredible things with their dynamic suspension, for sure. Some cars, you hit the selector lever and, you know, I'm not sure what it did. <laughs> it did was there a change? Yeah. With Mercedes, it's genuinely a change. You can be rolling straight at freeway speed and change from comfort to, for, to sport. Change nothing in your body or your foot placement or anything. You can feel the car hunker. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know crispy on a canyon road and then you go for ice cream with the kids i didn't know the crispy was our new term it I like is that. It, it's this is both hatchy and handily by it the way. is it, it is. is both of those it's an expensive handly hatchy it is very expensive for kit. hatchy and handly but yeah but yeah, is, yeah you can have crispy handling and crispy <laughs> throttle response it's it's really on I'm just seeing the cereal box hatchy and handly now crispier it's just it's all of the above i don't know maybe mercedes can work with that i'm back in love with mercedes the tech alone <laughs> is worth the buy. They have figured that out and they have differentiated themselves actually with a system you want. Mm -hmm. It works, of course, Android and Apple CarPlay. And as you've identified before, the split between the two wide screens is uh -huh. right where your hand would be, right where yep. the steering wheel goes. Yep. So you can you choose the different skins mm -hmm. for the overlays here and you've got a lot of information about the car. Yeah, there we go. And of course, the system in the Mercedes, I feel is far better for actually being accurate mm. with you know what you're doing while you're driving. You can do it while driving pretty easily. I agree with that. Yep. Yeah, and yep. the yep. same touch-sensitive button is on the steering wheel over here. I, I'm in love with what they're doing, and their interiors are great. We drove the GLS the recently. Solidity. Their big, high-end, most expensive yeah. S-Class yeah. SUV. Okay, we drove that, and this has got all that same tech in here. Essentially, it's just all starting yep. to become that. I'd rather have this in the GLS, but I understand the GLS is a whole different market segment. I get it. This has the uh, LED piping in the lights, and I don't yes. know if you notice, but as you change different modes, it automatically changes. So right changes. now we've got a little bit of a red accent. If you put it on comfort mode, it's blue. I don't know comfort. Apparently, you can actually blue. dig into the menu and, and then you can change, change yourself. Colors. You can say, I want it to be this color when this happens. Well, which when is you start the party, totally. you can change the so colors. So you can figure out what color you want it to be, which is interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a gimmick, but it does look very classy. It's interesting that it's in both of those camps. Well, this also it gives has, you an emotional feel about yes. the car and you're driving. This also has the scent thing. Have you, have you seen it? It's right in here. Oh, good. It's got, it's got the, the, the Mercedes cologne that sits Dang. in there. It's like a hockey puck of perfume. Well, honestly, we must always smell fresh. 
and consistently refreshing ourselves. And, and I'm sure I could find out how often it happens, but it just it spritzes the cabin without you doing anything every now and then. And you're driving along, so that. What is that? What is that? It's nice. That is, that is also a part it's of the nice, a luxury experience. It's nice, but it happens automatically. It was true in the GLS as well. By the way, you can buy different scents from Mercedes. What's the scent you'd like today? You mm-hmm. can have a scent to match your mood. Am I doing the right voice for this scent thing? Forget new car smell. We, we, have, we have reached a world in this car where we are beyond new car smell because we're going to keep spritzing the cabin with the scent of your choice. Well, you realize what a new car smell is. It's the off-gassing of yes. plastics and vinyls and leathers. and It's, it, it it's, smells it's, nice and new, but it's actually the materials that are things aging. fresh out of production. Yes. And they're, they're oxidizing in yes. the air. So, you know, Mercedes is overcoming that. Uh-huh. And it's part of the experience. If I'm paying $122,000 for this thing, <laughs> sure. Bring the fragrance. But, but at that Bring point, that. Can we get it for 80 like and buy that. an air freshener? Can we do that? What are the ways we can pare this have down? No, the olfactory I understand quality. I get it. I get that it. goes into this is different than the pine tree hanging but you're from miss- your rear view. But you're missing my larger point. That is not point. an air freshener. I understand. That is an air toxifier. But my, 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 my larger point here, help me. I'm trying to help the general public. The point here is, I would like to get more people in this wagon. Can we get rid of things like the olfactory system and get it into more people's hands? I Will we buy this, please? Sure. If there was a $75,000 version of this, would we all buy it instead of the well, Suburban? Uh, I please would think so. Please. I would like to think so, but you know, everybody wants the new thing. Yeah. I am so ready to pass this Lexus. I am so ready to oh, just you will. blow past mm-hmm. it. But you can. There's yeah. no. You need a hmm, blink of space. Do I need? Do I? Do I have the power to get around this? <laughs> you have the power. Six hundred and twenty-seven pound feet of torque. Okay. Yeah, yes. That is well over a hundred pound feet of torque more than we had in the the GT. I, I know they're both four liter turbocharged <laughs> engines from Mercedes, so you would think they're similar. I said it when I was driving, and I tr- truly believe it. This car is more oh, ready to wow. Crossing the double yellow, you're just wow. going for it. This car is far more ready to take off than that GT. Oh it yeah, just, it it explodes when you breathe on the gas pedal. It the does. GT, it I feel does. like, kind of gathers itself. This just goes, we're gone. You know, I, driving this car makes me feel like we're at the end of an era. Mm. Not in terms of cars available for sale by by virtue of their platform, but the powertrain itself. Hmm. Because of the noise, that is also an emotion in this car. It How is part good of it. It, sounds. it is part of it. Yeah. You have sure. an exhaust button sure. on this yeah. car. What there wagon has right an exhaust there. button to turn on the yep. you know powerful? There's balanced, and then there's powerful. <laughs> I'm really ready to pass his Lexus. Still ready. Well, but be, let's be honest. Ultimately, parenting winds up being a sacrifice, especially in the realm of cars. I can't get the fun sports yeah. car. I have a couple yeah. of kids. Maybe we should get a minivan. Have you seen how much plastic stuff we have to put in the back of the car? These are the sacrifices. And I so the sports the, cars the Cheetos die. And the Cheerios out the of the back sports before cars I go die. Pick up the clients. This is the car that allows you to be that enthusiast listen parent. Listen to that. Anyway. It is. Did you listen to that? That just that brings out the hooliganism in you. Wow. <laughs> the car that you can dent from the inside out with all the stuff, you know, maybe it will be somebody's head. This but is such you a sleeper. Corner Granted, so hard in this car. It's fully murdered, blacked out here. It tells you great. something's going on, but this is a sleep. What it can do, I think it's still a sleeper. <laughs> the upshift. <laughs> you know there's something going on here, but I don't think you suspect, if you look at it from the outside, that it can do everything it really can. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. See? That's a big number. That is a big a number. A big number that is also not represented on that sign. Mm-hmm. That's where we are today. Thank you, Georgia. <laughs> Thank you, Mercedes. Thank you, Mercedes. That's, that's where we are. Ooh, ooh, even crackly. This is why people love sleepers, because of this. Hey, this look, is we caught up to another minivan. Look at that. Right here. This is the hooligan parrot. That's, mm-hmm. You become that guy in the pickup line, and I'm fine with that. It'll I'm bring it all out good with that. And then you'll wonder, why do I need another car? <laughs> this, this. It's I just the price. I desperately want this car. I know you do. You have no need for it, and you want it anyway. No. Yeah. Winter tires. Winter mo... Oh, come on. Winter tires on this bad boy. Yeah. You're driving it year-round. You're taking it to the track. This you're is picking the kids up from school. Honestly, and this, you're drifting through Starbucks. Yes, this is in some ways Love it. the discerning choice, even in, among Mercedes buyers. I like this. There's, I like this. There's Pull on this thread. There's discussion out there to suggest that the people that buy this are some of Mercedes' <laughs> financially best, well-off, and most discerning buyers. 
buy mm -hmm. the E63 wagon mm -hmm. because the AMG one because they know what they're getting and they're shopping for something very specific. This is yeah. a niche car for the enthusiast with money that just wants to be like, I can take all of you and all the stuff. Yes.